Every Tuesday, I'm joined by my friends, Jay Truitt, Andrew Henderson. Welcome, guys. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Doing great. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of exciting things happening around the country, maybe around the world. I thought we could kick off this Tuesday by maybe celebrating some victories. So, Jay, you have some exciting news in your neck of the woods. What's going on with your family? Well, yeah, my wow. uh, my wife opens her new uh, uh, mercantile and pie shop uh, tomorrow. Wow. And awesome. uh, I'm in here this morning making coffee to make sure that the coffee pot works and uh, uh, to do some last minute touch up paint jobs, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I, I mean, to be honest with you, right, there's. I, I, while I made a lot of stuff inside this building, um, this is my wife and her project from beginning to end. And uh, it's been one of the fun things to just watch her creativity just kind of explode. There's uh, you walk in the door and there's twinkle lights. And uh, uh, I learned something this week. I learned what tool is. I had no idea, but it's the <laughs> stuff that they make. Uh, she didn't like, pull uh, you one, did she? Uh, no, <laughs> no. You but one, it's, the mater- it's the oh, material okay. that they make okay. tutus out of, right? And uh, there is a lot of that in this store. So okay, so it's what's fun. the store called? Where is it located? And I need to hear all the flavors of pies, too. Oh, well, yeah. so, okay. So we'll start with the basics. Hillbilly Debutante mercantile and pie shop okay. is the name of the store uh it is at 101 north main el dorado springs missouri uh, which is kind of our artificial hometown neither one of us were born here uh, but we did both uh, graduate from high school here and our parents live somewhere generically in this vicinity um so it kind of wow. is uh, our family family home and our home away from all the other homes that we spend time in. Um, but it, uh, pies, uh, you know, literally everything is on the map and the way it's going to work is that Kathy has a bunch of friends that all make great pies. And I mean, not just people that make pies. Our next door neighbor is, is, could be a world renowned baker if somebody just knew who she was, right? Literally the lady is phenomenally talented. And then uh, there's a couple of professional pie makers here in town that are going to supply pies. My wife is going to make one now and then, but every day will be a surprise. You just have to come by and see what the pie of the day or two pies of the day might be. And, uh, it's a, it's, it's a clothing retail store. Again, it's a mercantile. Um, my wife would, I don't know what you call this, uh, hippie cowgirl, Texas, I don't, something kind of clothing is what she sells. But it has lots of glitter, lots of glam. There's a lot of sparkles, uh, et cetera. It's a very girly, girly place. But uh, starting next week on Tuesday mornings, we plan on having a, a men's coffee hour where we can talk about the women in private while the store is closed. It'll be open on Wednesdays through Saturday. Um, So Monday, uh, Monday is her day to go out and find new items. Tuesdays though is uh, um, um, this show uh, at uh, seven o'clock in the morning central time. So and I I know people can't see because this is radio, but Right. Jay is sitting behind a beautiful wall mural with a crown right. decal that's perfectly placed right on his head. Yeah. So right. if the crown exactly. fits, wear it. But exactly. I, I, just, yeah. <laughs> I just think it's awesome to see new businesses popping up in rural America and that entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. And I have to say, yeah. I do care. I do have books that I sell wholesale. So have yeah. her call me. All right. I'm gonna hook her up with some books. <laughs> yeah, no. We'll send a we'll send a book, see, maybe send a box down the and we'll see how it works. Yeah. Process. yeah. <laughs> okay. So okay. my my wife is an author as well, right? And she's written a couple of books. She has another book coming out. Um uh, uh she's had one book turned into a movie, the other one made it to as a finalist in screencraft, and so uh oh. she made the top ten uh scripts that 
um, that all those people pick. I would expect sometime in the next year it'll also become a movie. It'll be called The Hillbilly Debutante Cafe, which was the original idea behind this whole place that we're in. And, uh, oh, and then there's a follow-up There's a follow up to that where it just gets a little bit weird. Um, and <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. Uh, my wife's a really creative lady, and uh, we're almost nothing alike. But we uh, we are a great pair together, which is kind of funny, you know. But <laughs> okay, I think so rewind. What, what's are. the title of the book and movie that people could watch and read now? So yeah. the 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 her first book is a book called False Victim. It is based on a true story uh, of her life, actually, and an event that happened to her where, uh, in the most bizarre way, uh, my wife, who is literally one of the sweetest, most compassionate human beings ended up being falsely accused of a whole series of crimes um, by just a crazy lady that lived around the corner and uh, uh, at one point was effectively being charged with attempted murder. And wow. uh, she writes that story in a pure fictional sense. Well, then after that, uh, that book is, uh, um, there's a, a movie on, uh, let's see, Lifetime, I think it was, yeah, Lifetime, uh, you can find it on Amazon, which is Neighbor in the Window. Not a very good copy of the book, uh, but still, you know, it's cool. Uh, you get to see your wife's name in big letters at the beginning and the end of the movie. Uh, the Kathy Truett, False Victim, is the name of that book. But um, then she wrote Hillbilly Debutante Cafe, basically just to get that book out of her system. <laughs> and to write something that was just fun. And that you could laugh and that's about small town America and how small town America has its struggles, but they all figure out how to pull together. It's kind of like a Hallmark moment kind of book, you know. Um, and then the follow up uh, that again, that one is the one that uh, I expect probably to be turned into something by somebody. And then uh, there'll be a follow up to that. So maybe she'll have a little mini series or something. It'll be fun. We are we are not going to have Trent act in the book though and i did or in the movie uh, because he was so selfish in the stand and uh, he played such a selfish character that there's really not a role unless we have uh, maybe maybe if there's a murder we could get trent be the one that is murdered this time Murders my him. goodness the guy he uh, was just the, he actually wanted to be the sheriff in the stand do you remember that uh, and they were like yeah, the no. And they were like, uh, with that black cowboy hat and that mustache, you just better be the hay guy. He had hay to be crook. the bat. Yep. Yeah, he had to be the hay guy, right? <laughs> and now karma's no. come back on him because he can't find a yeah. bale of hay to buy. So Right now. <laughs> no, exactly, right? Yeah. yeah. He's been searching for hay for weeks and uh, yeah, can't no. find any. So the shoe's on the other See, foot when, now. He goes, he, goes, he goes at the farmyard and take one look at him and say, we're not giving any, any hay yeah. to you, man. Off you go. And if folks aren't familiar, yeah. that movie is The Stand at Paxton County, yeah. and you can watch that on Netflix. Trent does right. make an appearance, but more importantly, it is a based on a true story of animal rights activists infiltrating uh, local law enforcement and right. just the absolute chaos and horror that a family had to experience when they became the target of this group. Uh, Jay, with uh, we're, I'm going to get to you, Andrew, but I got to wrap this segment up with Jay because I hate to tell you this, mm -hmm. Jay, but I'm pretty sure you just got yourself out of a radio gig because I want your wife on the show. She sounds oh, way yeah. cooler than that. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is, so my wife is prettier than me, <coughs> probably smarter well, than me. Well, that's not hard, is it? And you know, that's right? <laughs> She's smarter than me. Uh, and she is a lot more entertaining than I am. Yeah, well, it, well, it'll be. Are you a parent or teacher looking for accurate resources to teach kids about where their food comes from? Consider checking out my books at amandaradke.com. These stories highlight the men and women who provide us with the essentials of life, food, fiber, and energy. Beautifully illustrated by Michelle Weber, these books are a work of art and they have an educational message as well. Find them at amandaradke.com. Jay has a really exciting day uh, with his wife opening up a store. And now I have to ask, Andrew, what's exciting going on in your world? You appear to have survived the pheasant. So I'm thinking things are pretty yeah, good for you. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, I survived, I've survived the pheasant, but the good news we had over the weekend, uh, and I, I didn't announce this on, on uh, Across the Pond this morning, is that uh, my youngest daughter got engaged this weekend. Hey, and that's hey. the first one of my two daughters to get engaged. That's so, um, I'm, yeah, well, I'm, I'm hoping for maybe the trip to Mexico or Vegas. I'm totally the opposite to Trent. That's where I'd love to go for a wedding. So we'll wait yeah. and see. But it looks <laughs> as though it might be taking place at the farm here. Uh, all right. There you so go. In, in English fashion, is he is he a good fella or is he a bloke? Is that the English uh, word? Well, you can be a good fella and a good bloke, but he's a good oh. bloke. Yeah, he's a oh, good bloke. Is, blo um, is bloke not negative? Is that a positive thing? No. You can oh. be a great bloke. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought it was negative. No. All right. No. Yeah, you <laughs> okay. can be a, really, gonna, you can be a gonna, top bloke. I want yeah, to Andrew, you can be a fantastic English. bloke. Andrew, we're going to have to anyway, go back to um, word of the day. Yeah, word of the day, bloke. It, you can use it <laughs> in, a, in a good good fashion. All right. Well, that's my he last He can be a horrible day. bloke. He could be a great bloke, but he can oh. still be a bloke. So it's more like just a fella. <laughs> He's a nice fella. Um, okay. He, uh, she went out with an Italian stallion for five years, and uh, and now she's been going out with this gentleman for hmm, a couple of years. And uh, yeah, at the weekend we found out that um, they're going to tie the knot. So there you go. How and that will you... be my first of my two children to get married. So there you go. So How we'll have exciting. to start saving the pennies. Yeah, that's going to cost you. It is. It is. <laughs> But not nearly as much as it's going to cost him to look after her. So that's <laughs> fine by me. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. anyway, that's, that's I, hard to beat. Uh, that's exciting. Cha-ching, though. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, our friend Kevin yeah. Jenkins, his daughter just got married over the weekend, too. And he was texting photos from the day. And it looked very oh, beautiful. Wow. And he was a proud papa. So there's just something yeah. about that milestone in life. Uh, it's hard to beat that, that special time. Do you know, uh, going back to the um, the hillbilly and uh, what was this? De what's Deb the second one? Hillbilly debutante. Debutante yep. cafe and the uh -huh. pies. We went to my, my daughter, um, my eldest daughter, she has a stand every week at this fantastic market in Altrincham near Manchester where there's lots of craft things there. And one of the things that I like going there for is the different types of pie. And this weekend... They had a chicken and black pudding pie, which was amazing. And they do it in gravy and mashed potatoes. But there can't be anything more local to me to signify you belong to a, 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 um, a community than a community pie. And I think mm -hmm. what you're doing there is fantastic for the world we're about to live in, to be quite honest with you, because everything is going to have to go to these local cafes and pies. And I actually do believe that one of the subjects we should be talking about today is that the demise, and I think it's coming fast, of the huge discount supermarket. Yeah. I honestly think we're on the... Because when things become scarce, and we know they're going to come scarce, those places, by scale of their activities, go, back, go bust very, very quickly. If they have no goods... And no, and 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 it can't be distributed all over the country. They're all going to go bust very quickly. Do you not agree with me, folks? I do. I see. You know, shortages happening. There's less and less stuff in stock. But through this whole thing, I've thought this is a great opportunity for innovators and business owners to say, yeah. "I'm going to recreate the medical system. I'm going to recreate education. I'm going to recreate the food system, and I'm going to do it locally and provide solutions to people in my circle." It's all good news. And that, and it's a great, you know, we've started today. Jay brought in the first bit of good news. But actually, if you think about what's happening at the moment, it's all good news because the real victims of the tyranny that's going on now, providing we stop it, are going to be the massive conglomerates. Because as soon as they haven't got enough cars or they haven't got enough lorries or they haven't got enough people to pick the fruit, as soon as that happens their whole model collapses. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I think it's really interesting because we're seeing farmers in this part of the world at the moment 
that are actually now saying, hang on a minute, the supermarkets are paying the least for the milk, one in particular, actually. Well, we're not going to supply them. We're going to supply less because it's costing us too much to produce. So what happens when they get less milk than they need? Happy days. And I actually think this whole thing is backfiring on everybody. Um, you, you know that I think that this is partly, well, more than partly planned. But I think they've got it so wrong and they don't know how to turn the clock back now. Yeah, I, it, it is interesting. My uh, uh, So, and again, not to steal any thunder from my wife in the future, but a big part of this whole thing for her was uh, to be able to come to uh, a, a community, our, uh, again, what is kind of our home-based community, that has experienced a significant economic downturn over the last, you know, 25, 30 years. It's been a tough struggle here. And to start a new business that hopefully, and I don't want this to sound wrong, it's not really designed for the people here. It's designed for people to come here mm -hmm. and to see. Mm -hmm. And Good. there's there's two or three, there's two or three uh, other businesses that are forming in this same general area that kind of make this a little bit of a destination for people that want to do that kind of stuff. Right. And to buy, um, you know, the weird antiques and, um, and the stuff that is just, you know, a little different than what everybody else has. And, but for her, I will tell you the whole idea of being able to do it in the downtown area, which has, uh, was, you know, until recently was just almost disappearing here. And now it's kind of springing back to life. And she, she would tell you that she might not admit it, but privately that's almost all the conversations we had, you know, and um, she, she doesn't care what Walmart does or target does or, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's not who it is. And most of her suppliers are small companies mm -hmm. um, that do unique things. Um, she has a hundred different jams and jellies, right. That you can buy here and pie fillings wow. et cetera, that you can buy of your own. Um, and, and they're all made by local women. Right. Awesome. And it's this whole women owned group that has come together and they started making their, all their own stuff. The, number one, the products are phenomenal, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you find out when you start really doing it. Um, are they cheaper than the Smucker's brand jelly that you can buy on the third shelf at Walmart? No, they're not. They cost mm -hmm. about a buck more, mm -hmm. but they are phenomenally good. Right. And, um, uh, it, it turns out that the lady that made that, um, is also the lady that you see in town somewhere roaming around. Yep. Right. And there's some value to that. Right. It, it's the way that we all support each other and, and connect to each other, I think, in a unique way. And I'm, I'm not an anti um, a big box person. Right. That's just not really who I am. I think capitalism um, fixes that. But I do think that Andrew's point is correct. I think they're uh, they live on thin ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once their infrastructure is threatened a little bit and we see things like the economy resetting, look at what's happened to Amazon stock price over the last, uh, just the last three months. They're down a thousand points, a thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not well, I mean, um, it's, it's yeah, a huge and, and, drop. And, mm -hmm. and look, Amanda, Amanda, while we're on, I've sort of, I'm, really excited about what Jay's doing. And I know that locally, you know, here we have a, a community pub that's just opened, but it is a destination pub. It's mm -hmm. the same description that Jay gave. We're trying to encourage people to come and see all the local mm -hmm. uh, cheeses and, uh, and alcohol you can buy from around here. And the food is geared to being local. And here we are, the two of us sat between the queen of somebody that does that yeah. every day yeah. of her life from her farm. I mean, yep. you do that. You've got the, you've got all this, the branding that you've got, and also your great beef products, etc. So, tell us, how's that doing in this climate at the moment? How's your own business doing? Because yeah. you're right in that right now, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm excited to share more about what I've been doing on a Good News Tuesday. We'll be right back after this short break. Hey, friends. 
The saying goes that freedom doesn't come free. And without the brave men and women serving our country to protect our freedoms and liberties, everything that we love and hold dear in this country would be for naught. So to thank the troops, would you consider buying them a steak? Check out the All-American Beef Battalion. Since 2007, the late Bill Brody and his team of volunteers have served over 400,000 steaks to the troops and their families as a way to say thank you. Learn how you can get involved and support this organization by checking out steaksfortroops.com. Andrew, you asked about how my local business is going. And, and just like Jay's wife, yeah. that's kind of how I've structured it is, you know, small vendors, uh, creatives people that are doing high quality work in unique ways to try to support. And he's right. It would be a lot easier and cheaper to, you know, just order in bulk from China. Um, but being able to find all these vendors and know I'm blessing their family and they're blessing my family. And it's just kind of a nice loop. And as you're talking about Amazon stock going down, I kind of smiled because, <laughs> because as a society, <laughs> that's also good news because as a society, We've just gotten so used yeah. to that two day ship and it comes, you know, freaky fast, although it hasn't really in the last two years. So if you're paying for Amazon Prime, you're kind of getting a rip off anyway. Um, but hearing some of the policies of, of Jeff Bezos at Amazon, it's like, I don't want to support him. I want to support people who have the same values as me, who are pursuing the American dream, who are trying to make things work. And they're working hard and it, it is hard work. You're taxed on every dollar you earn. You know, there's regulations and red tape and all this cumbersome stuff that you have to deal with. But at the end of the day, if we choose to kind of keep our dollars circulating locally, everybody benefits. And, and there's been articles out that talk about role brain drain and how all of the talented kids get out of high school and they leave and they go to the big cities. Well, right now, the big cities are not safe. They're not a great place to raise a family. And I was in Nebraska speaking at an FFA chapter banquet and all these high school kids, they're super talented and they're doing these amazing, incredible projects that they were so excited to tell me about. And the biggest piece of advice I told them is keep developing your skills, figure out what your passions are and what your purpose is in life, and then figure out how to get paid to do it. But bring all of that back to rural Nebraska, set up right. shop in your communities. Thanks to the internet, we can almost do anything from at home, but keep your home base in the place that raised you and, and everybody will benefit. And I just, yeah, I just, it's good news to me. I see that trend moving more and more people are figuring out how to invest in these small communities and kind of make them blossom again. So it's pretty, and pretty you know, exciting. Uh, Amanda, to the point you make, I mean, one of the, uh, I don't, I, I, I realize that I tend to turn everything political, right? But I do too. It, it, you're right. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that um, I'm only going to do business with people who have the same conservative values that I do. Mm -hmm. I. Yeah. It, it is one of those things, and and you know sometimes in certain circles you go, okay, well maybe that person even votes for different candidates than I do. But you're but in the in the local community you're still having that conversation. That mm -hmm. person's also not funding two thousand mules to do 5,229 drops, you know, between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m., potentially uh, shifting hundreds of thousands of votes and elections to, to artificially skew them. That person and you are having a direct conversation, right? And you can, yep. we can, we can have civil discourse and disagree. Um, I had lunch this week with a guy who is a Democrat party leader in the state, uh, but he's also a local farmer, right? And it was funny. We could have lunch and we had a whole conversation and we really didn't talk about all the things that we know make each other angry. There is a lot that we agree on. There's a whole bunch of things that we can figure out how to work on in our own local communities uh, to make them better and stronger. Why not? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it again, I'm not an I'm not an anti big guy mm -hmm. uh, by any stretch, but I think that they offer something that uh, they can't offer something that local local community-based initiatives can offer. And again, it's exactly what you described. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it allows young people to come back and find their footing. And maybe they turn into a Microsoft or a, a, a Bezos, right? Good for them, right? Mm -hmm. Warren Buffett started yeah. from nothing. Great. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not critical of that. I'm just saying that you, uh, why not start it in your own 
local community and figure that out and yep. uh, uh, more power to them. That, that's where I'm at too. It's, it's yeah. like, I, I don't fault someone for getting big, but I, what I see is some of these big guys like Target or Amazon or Walmart, uh, they've shown their true colors by meddling in political affairs. And then you have to decide, is that where I'm going to spend my dollars or am I going to spend it with my neighbor who, when oh wildfires eat through Nebraska, they're the ones that are going to show up to help you rebuild your fences. Or when you get right. flooding, like that's happening in North Dakota after all these blizzards, like who's going to show up with a casserole and, you know, to say like, I know you've been going through a tough time. It isn't Jeff Bezos, it's your neighbor. And so yeah. I, I, I actually just think there's a, a shift happening that's just for good where people take care of each other. And, and maybe that's not present everywhere, but I see it happening more and more in my travels. We're just good people are finding each other. That divisiveness that's in the news just isn't there when you're actually with people and you sit down and talk to them. And I, I just think that's pretty amazing. I want to.